Now Compton scattering is a case where an incoming photon of x-rays scatters off an electron and the outgoing photon ends up having a longer wavelength. That's known as Compton effect or Compton scattering. In this video I'm going to solely concentrate on how the formula for Compton scattering is derived. What is the formula? Well it basically says that lambda of the in outgoing which is lambda 2 minus lambda 1 which is our incoming is going to be equal to h over mc outside of 1 minus the cosine of phi. So how is this formula derived? Well stay tuned. If you want a further explanation of what Compton scattering is then I suggest you check out my video on Compton scattering. Let's begin. I've deliberately left my face off this. That's probably a good thing so that I've got maximum space to work with. Now we've got here our obviously our interaction, our incoming photon, our electron being scattered and an outgoing photon which of course has a longer wavelength. And I'm going to be using two key concepts, the conservation of momentum and the conservation of energy. And I'm going to use two different colors for the two. So I'm going to use white to discuss our momentum and I'm going to use yellow to discuss our energy. Now the momentum of the incoming photon, we're just going to call that to P1. And the outgoing momentum is also going to be P, but it's going to be P2. Now the electron has also momentum, but we're going to differentiate it from P1 and P2 by just simply calling it E. Now we know that the energy of any photon is simply equal to its momentum times the speed of light, pc. And it's basically coming out of that e squared equals p squared c squared plus mc squared all squared. Now that means our energy here is going to be equal to p1c. Our outgoing energy here is going to be p2c. Now the energy of my electron going out here is due to the fact of the a kinetic energy but also the rest mass energy. So in other words what we end up getting is the square root of PC all squared. Remember this is our little E over here plus we're going to say E naught squared which is our rest energy. And the last thing is that we also have the rest energy of the electron before the collision takes place which we're also going to call E naught. Now we're going to come back to energy in a moment, but I want to discuss particularly the conservation of momentum. If I take my vectors, let's say I take my vector, that is this vector here, which is the vector of the momentum of the incoming photon, and I then also have the two momenta after the collision like so, you can see that they mathematically add up. That is, we're showing conservation of momentum. So this here is P1, this here is going to be our P2 and this is going to be our PE. The angle phi that of course we're going to be needing is that angle here. So there's two ways now you, you can put all this together. One is using the cosine rule. The other one is to break it up into the X components and the Y components. I'm going to use the cosine rule. Now using the cosine rule in this case, you'll see that PE all squared is equal to P1 all squared plus P2 all squared minus 2 P1 P2 cosine phi. So that is the formula we want to use for the conservation of momentum and we're going to stick to that formula in a moment. Let's now look at the energy aspect and again I'm going to put our momentum equation above here. Now let's talk about our energy. Remember the energy before equals the energy afterwards. So what we have is our energy of our incoming photon which is going to be equal to P1C plus the rest energy of our electron which is going to call E0 is equal to the energy of our outgoing photon which is P2C plus the square root of PEC squared plus our E0 squared. That is our relativistic energy aspect right there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate this here and then I'm going to square it. So if I do that, I'm going to get PEC all squared plus E naught all squared. Now that means on the other side, I end up getting P1C plus E naught minus P2C. And of course, that has to be all squared. Now then I have to expand this out. Now in order to expand this out, you just need to be reminded of the fact that if I have a plus b plus c all squared, that is equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2ab plus 
2AC plus 2BC. And so I get P1C all squared plus E0 all squared plus P2C all squared plus P1C multiplied by 2 multiplied by, by E0 plus 2 times P1C but this time multiplied by P2C but it's a negative in this case. And then lastly 2 times E0 multiplied by P2C but this one here is negative. That of course is all equal to PEC all squared plus E0 squared. Now I'm going to do two things here in one step. You'll start, first of all see that I have E0 squared and I can remove it. The second thing I'm going to do as well as moving this PEC squared on the left hand side of the equation, so I might as well just do that right now, is I'm going to combine this term here and this term here. You can see we've got an E0, a 2 and a C that I can take out. So what I end up getting when I isolate PEC squared, I get really what's left over. That's P1C all squared. I get the plus P2C all squared. I also have the plus the negative 2, P1, P2 and then C squared again. And then lastly I can add 2, take the E0 out, take the C out and then I have a P1 minus our P2. The next step here then is to divide here everything by C squared. You'll see that there's a C in every statement. So I end up getting our PE squared is equal to P1 squared plus P2 squared. Now plus negative 2P1 P2 C squared. So I get negative 2P1 P2. That's all I have left. And then I have plus 2 E0 P1 minus P2. But of course this is going to be divided by C because I divided by everything by C squared. Now I have a statement here in terms of PE squared that I had for momentum up here as well. So I'm going to put those two together. P1 squared plus P2 squared minus 2 P1 P2 cosine phi. Well that's equal to this statement P1 squared plus P2 squared minus 2 P1 P2 and then plus this statement over here which is going to be our 2 E0 P1 minus P2 all over C. Now P1s and P2s straight away cancel out. What I can do is I can isolate this part of the equation here and I get 2 E0 outside of P1 minus P2 over C is equal to, now I'm going to add that on the other side of the equation, so I get 2P1P2 P2 minus 2P1P2 P2 cosine phi. Of course I can divide everything here by 2 and then I can also take out the P1s and P2. So I get E0 outside of P1 minus P2 over C is equal to, I take the P1 and the P2 out and I get 1 minus cosine phi. You can see we're getting close because we get this expression of 1 minus cosine phi. But what's E0? Well E0 is mc squared. So we divide that by C, we just get mc outside of P1 minus P2 is equal to P1, P2 outside of 1 minus cosine phi. I'm going to put this on that side of the equation and I'm going to put this on this side of the equation. So what I end up getting is P1 minus P2 over P1 P2 is equal to 1 over MC multiplied by 1 minus cosine phi. Now what's P1 and P2 divided by P1 and P2? Well if I just separate that out I end up getting P1 over P1, P2, so I get 1 over P2 minus 1 over P1 is equal to 1 over MC outside of 1 minus cosine phi. What's P2 or any P? P is equal to H over lambda. So therefore 1 over P is lambda over H. So what I end up getting here is lambda 2 over h minus lambda 1 over h 
is equal to 1 over mc multiplied by 1 minus cosine phi. If I now multiply both sides by h, I'm going to get lambda 2 minus lambda 1 is equal to h over mc outside of 1 minus cosine of phi. And there is the derivation for Compton's formula.